All right, people. That was hype. That was a really good stretch, but the loose slack and Mazino fight is over. Please like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell down so the goals of the 13 month series doesn't get you and you can stay notified. And what I wanted to do today was kind of go through the fight, talk about the big picture takeaways and what it is SIU was trying to portray with this little scuffle between Mazino and loose slack because I think there's a lot that he did. And all things considered, I think he did a really good job. Personally speaking, I think it's a much better job than what he did with Gustang and Traumare especially how the fight ended or was interrupted i think how this fight concluded was going to go a long way to how we ended up taking it and i like that loose like pretty much was like we kind of don't have anything to gain here i have something i need to do someone i need to fight possibly you have someone you're hunting and you're here to do go do that leave me alone we're enemies i don't want to see you again but if i see you again hey i feel i feel like i could whoop you and i was like is he capping so we're gonna talk about all that i thought it was a very good chapter i really liked it but i do want to ask you this real quick and then we'll move on to the meat and potatoes of this fight and my question for you is who is mazino here to take down do you think it's the boss or the captain i saw some people think it was Hadon. I thought some people say it was Phantom Minimum. I don't know what it is that you're thinking, but who do you think that Mazino was here to take down? And let's talk about this fight. Now, personally, I think that SIU did a very good job showcasing many things with this scuffle. Some of it was very, I think he made one small mistake and I know I harped on it and it's just kind of the, the loose like joke face when he was just kind of like, oh my God, he broke it. I'm in trouble kind of thing. Like. I, I, in hindsight, I decided that that was just supposed to be a comedic moment to show that Loose Like is not like overly super serious. And, and even though he's very powerful and strong, he's got some like personality deficiencies, if you will. I honestly never have a problem with this trope where some of the strongest people have like the goofy side to them. Roger might, you know, do something goofy in, in One Piece. Hashirama is not overly serious all the time or something like Naruto. But I think that grounds the character and makes them multifaceted. I would argue Zeno falls into that category too when we learned that he he's not very good with women <laughs> he'd be texting them all and they don't even mess with him like that so i think that stuff is very funny and it goes a long way so my big picture takeaway for me actually the first thing i want to say is i think spells are actually hacks and od and bear with me because i'm sure a lot of you are like you idiot duh but my point here is that because we've rolled with Bam for so long and we followed 25th Bam, the son of Arlene, who was a very proficient spell caster. And I would argue that Bam has inherited some of that natural ability by being a natural walking D spell, Asta, if you will, in Black Clover with anti magic or Kami Joe Toma with Imagine Breaker in Index. So spells kind of just don't work on him. I guess I, guess I would say as a result of that, I downplayed how broken a lot of them are because even just thinking about levi's little question spell and his like suicide blizzard flames from the last station those were honestly crazy it just didn't work against bam specifically you know what i'm saying and now i'm thinking to myself honestly you can probably make the case that si did a good job hiding how powerful these spells were because he did that but seeing how they did against Mazino and like the, I sorry, I thought that Ghost Orchard or Goblin Thistle infinite resentment attack was crazy. That was crazy. That was super dope. Second takeaway is that I think Mazino has showcased the best Shinsu control and strength regulation in the series. I'm not saying he is the absolute pinnacle of the best, but the best we've seen so far. Being able to kind of adjust how much power he wants to use in a given situation. 5%, 1%, 10% with no Shinsu, 50% on the body 20 percent on the body 25 percent on the body 25 percent on all of my body except one of my arms that's 30 percent gorgon's fist being able to actually deal with spells and stuff like that but just because he's so strong sometimes he could just use his overwhelming power to defy logic and reason and i think that stuff was really dope so yeah i think his control is crazy and ultimately i think mazino looks a lot better in this fight at least not from not from a talking standpoint loose like barred him up and gave him gave him bars but i think the next thing that it did was give a lot more credence and i think people can now make a better case for talking about those outlier in tower born inhabitants who have the ability to step to like a family head or your mazinos of the world your perhaps your jihads of the world maybe i'm gonna go as far as enryu because a lot of my audience seems to believe Enryu is kind of like the God King, Phantom Minimum aside. Loose like doing what he did, showing off what he showed off, having Mazino question if he's holding back against him, and then him saying, yeah, I have some win conditions that I could have pulled out to win, but I don't exactly know how vast 
Mazzino's depth of strength is. So you never really know. It's all very interesting. So I think that hypes up characters like Adori, the three the three orders. They said she can carry them all out. I think it hypes up my princess and free and free my princess. Get her out that labyrinth or whatever it is she's stuck in. Get her out of there. I think it gives hype to characters like Bayek Ryun. I think it hypes up characters like Malik PGR. I'm not going as far as, as Jo Chun, as Ju Chun and Flukes, Flux. I'm not going as far as them. I just think Malik personally, because he's a leader of the three lords. The twins of High Urin and Arihan fall into that category and maybe there's some other ones that i'm not thinking at the top of my head but i think that it's giving credence that there, there are some in tower born people who are outliers who absolutely have the power to do something to a family head like a family head has to take them seriously these irregulars can't just be like oh you're a trifle a creature a bug a vermin i could be wrong that's how you can prove me wrong later on in the series but for the time being i think that um that's one of the other takeaways and ultimately i thought it was an enjoyable battle good back and forth mazino showing off his physical capabilities that gorgon fist looked similar to what bam kind of did to white but he did it with just one punch that face was crazy i didn't think he'd be associated with something like you know greek mythology at all with the gorgons thinking about medusa turning people to stone or whatnot loose like showing off a transformation a space time ability when his darkness returns where both people cannot interfere with one e with each other and he can kind of teleport it kind of had a phantom zone glass effect too which i thought was pretty cool he has spells he can transform he showed off some martial arts too stepped on that man's jays so it was a decent showcase i hope the black hook is still real and he has it it's not like a blog post thing that sou has discarded but i want to know what this you guys took away from this fight did you enjoy it was this your favorite stretch of season three or at least since he's come back from hiatus or did you like other things in the third season more than this fight i thought it was really good i do have a couple of follow-up stuff i'm going to speak about when it comes to this fight but for the time being for this video we'll leave it at that for today like subscribe hit the bell thank you guys for listening and have yourself a mighty fine day Bonjour and merci, Patreon. Thank you guys for your continued support. Shout out to the certified BAM lover, CBL Nation, Love BAM, James. That's the guy. That's the real slayer. Then we got the Priest of Fire. I really appreciate y'all. Thank you for your continued support. But they might be the real CBL certified brothers, lovers. And a huge, huge shout out to the tier threes, the fifth Zen gods. A huge thanks to Big Abdel, Andrew, Childish Nujabis, Fares, Huey, Johnny Rogers, Lazy Dragon, Lucky Roo, Naz Riley, Revenant, Scobe, Simi, Ticos, Tino Brown, Urek Mazzino, Zachary Cooper, Zodiac Namiko, and Zyler Scotty. Your support is greatly appreciated. I had some clean, sugary mud the other day. We moving on up. Thank you for helping me eat and pay my bills. Y'all be safe.